So last night I saw Bo's Afraid, the new film by Ari Aster, and I thought this movie was awesome. This movie is so incredibly loaded with symbolism and themes, and I want to break down the entire thing. Like the excessive crime in Bo's neighborhood, the disturbed teenage girl, Tony, the big surreal play in the forest, Elaine's character and her death in the bedroom, Bo's real father and kids, and the ending with the epic trial. I feel like I have a really thorough analysis, and I made sure to do my research, so I hope you enjoy this. So to break this movie down, we're going to use three themes. One, world of anxiety, where we'll discuss Bo's anxiety, the excessive crime, the teenage girl, Tony, and her death, and her extremely nice parents, Grace and Roger. Two, generational trauma, where we'll discuss Bo's relationship with his mother, the whole story being fast forwarded on the TV, and why Bo lost his key at his apartment. And three, escaping intimacy, where we'll discuss Bo meeting Elaine on the cruise ship, the meaning of the play in the forest, why Bo can't have sex, Bo's children, Elaine's death in the bedroom, Bo's oversized testicles, the penis in the attic, the pills, and the ending with the epic trial and much more. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, world of anxiety. I think we can all agree, in a movie like this, it's extremely difficult to differentiate what is real from what is not real. Which moments were reality, and which moments were delusion? But even though that's a fair question, I don't believe that's the best approach when trying to decipher a movie as bizarre and unhinged as this one. This twisted world, and all of the hyper-exaggerated elements of the story altogether, represent a state of mind, Bo's state of mind terrorized by anxiety. Hence the title, Bo is Afraid. The world in this movie represents the anxiety-driven perspective of our main character, Bo. The movie is almost entirely symbolic, telling Bo's life story in the language of Bo's anxiety, representing how he thinks and what he is going through. Very similarly to a movie like Blonde, or even more, I'm thinking of ending things. And through this story, we can personally identify and pull out the pieces of what are most likely the reality that makes Bo think this way. And throughout this video, I'll indicate what I feel certain about that did happen in Bo's life. What I can say now that is certainly true is Bo's anxiety is fueled by generational trauma. The generational trauma stemming from his toxic relationship with his mother, which we'll dive deeply into very soon. The world created in this movie is an exaggeration of the world we live in today. More specifically, the United States, with its depiction of homelessness, crime, police brutality, teenage drug abuse, social media, and so many more obvious instances. This terrifying, hyper-exaggerated world is all that Bo sees through a mind suffering from severe anxiety. The problems and dangers and threats of our real world are inflated in his head. And additionally, this heightened, exaggerated version of our real world reveals truths about how we handle delicate situations quite dismissively, like the mental illness of others. And even when there are people who are empathetic and caring in this world, like Grace and Roger, Bo can never completely warm up to them. There's also this everlasting fear in Bo of the younger generation, the generation that is the hardest to predict and the most difficult to understand. And for someone with Bo's condition, that can be extremely frightening. The two teens in the film, Tony and her friend, are always filming him without permission, peer pressuring him into taking drugs and using him for their own entertainment. And unfortunately, because of Bo's state of mind in this symbolic world of this movie, even the kindest people have the potential to turn their back on Bo and lose trust in him. The best symbol of this fear is when we see Grace turn her back on Bo when Tony commits suicide. In Bo's world, through the eyes of Bo's anxiety, no one can be trusted. Theme number two, generational trauma. I have to say, the whole basis of this second section of the video stems from a conversation I had with a guy sitting beside me during the credits. I couldn't help but ask him a question. I said, who do you think the antagonist is of this movie? Do you think it was Bo's mother or it was Bo himself? And this guy says to me very quickly, I think the antagonist of the film was generational trauma. And I said, sir, you nailed it. In one of the opening scenes of the film, Bo expresses to his therapist his concerns about his relationship with his mother, Mona. 
The memories of his mother haunt him. He mentions that he feels like his mother felt unappreciated when he didn't express his love for her the way that she wanted. And he explains the pressure he feels about his mother wanting him to be just like her. We'll never know exactly what Mona did to Bo since this movie is so obscure, but he most certainly suffered from some kind of severe emotional abuse and likely physical abuse as well. And additionally to this, later on in the film, we hear from Mona that Mona's mother was also abusive to Mona. And the director of this movie, Ari Aster, has demonstrated themes of passed down hereditary mental illness in his work before, hence the title of his debut feature film, Hereditary. Generational trauma is the disease that is fueling Bo's severe anxiety that he will suffer from for the rest of his life. It's a story that happens time and time again to the point where you almost know exactly how it's going to play out for a person like this. Hence the scene where Bo fast forwards on the TV and sees his own story play out ahead of time. A suddenly unfortunate situation like Bo losing his keys looks like it is beyond his control. But truly, it is something he actually deep down wishes to happen. It's the perfect scenario for Bo to avoid seeing his mother without feeling the guilt that comes with purposely avoiding her. The scene perfectly symbolizes how Bo battles between feeling guilt and revisiting trauma. And the specific subject of generational trauma is what allows us to understand so many more of the bizarre symbols that we see throughout this movie. And let me explain. I was reading into an article on Talkspace about generational trauma, and I found a super informative excerpt that I think you're really gonna like. This form of psychological trauma, generational trauma, can lead to physical and mental health problems as well as social and emotional difficulties. For example, Children who grow up in homes with domestic violence and experience childhood trauma may develop anxiety or depression as adults. They may also have trouble trusting people or forming intimate relationships. This cycle of unresolved trauma can affect generations to come. This excerpt perfectly explains the purpose of this movie and exactly what is happening to Bo. The trauma comes from his mother and his mother's mother. The anxiety is shown through the continuous chaos of Bo's environment. The lack of trust is symbolized by the highly volatile characters. And the fear of intimate relationships brings us to Elaine in theme number three, escaping intimacy. The sequence that we see in the film on the cruise ship was the very most real scene to me out of the whole movie. Elaine is Bo's first love, or at least his first hint of love and intimacy, very likely his first kiss. And while it was a super brief romantic moment, there was this innocence tied to the whole experience of being with Elaine on that cruise that Bo can never have again. A relationship with a fully grown woman would be completely different. There's experience and expectations tied to an adult relationship that Bo is way too terrified of and never got to see demonstrated by loving parents of his own. Bo will never have something like Elaine again and can only reflect on what once was. And this is why he keeps the photo of her throughout this entire story. And throughout Bo's life, Bo has been running away from the idea of a romantic relationship and a family, even though he deep down longs for it. And this is all symbolized beautifully by the play in the forest that Bo spontaneously becomes a part of. The entire play was a reflection of his life, but I would say this play sequence symbolizes his life choices rather than perfectly reflecting his life events. And here's what I mean. In the story, Bo builds a home, finds love, and has children. Soon after, he's separated from his family completely by an enormous wave, and he spends the rest of his days imprisoned and isolated, desperately trying to reconnect with his family. To me, this scene explains Bo's fantasy of having a loving partner and a family, but also the waves of depression and anxiety that tear him away from that. Bo's believed inability to have sex symbolizes his inability to become intimate and ultimately to love someone romantically. One of Bo's greatest fears is that he may become to his kids what his mother was to him and what his grandmother was to his mother. There's a cyclical generational nature to this trauma and abuse that Bo wants to completely cut off. 
but also he deeply longs for having a loving family. It's an inner conflict that can never be resolved. This is why we have the irony of Bo meeting his children at the end of the play, but also telling them he can't have children. Eventually, Bo finally makes it to his mother's funeral, but realizes it was all an elaborate plan executed by his mother to have Bo come back to her. This whole extravagantly orchestrated plan is cruel and manipulative, yet also unconditionally loving in its own twisted way, which altogether symbolizes how Mona does love her son, but is also cruelly abusive for reasons that came from her own trauma. And this is of course what we see the two of them break down in their heated discussion with one another. They express how they both love each other, but also feel hatred and guilt for the things they have done and have had done to them. And I can't forget or skip over the moment prior to this, where Bo has sex with Elaine, who he reconnects with after about 40 years. I'll keep it PG, but the reason why the sex ended that way was to symbolize that any attempt that Bo has at intimacy and long-term love will highly likely end in disaster due to his mental suffering and lack of trust. I also think Bo's oversized testicles were a humorous symbol of Bo's lifelong feeling of pent-up sexuality since he's still a virgin. And speaking of oversized genitals, Bo gets locked in the attic to find what is supposed to be his father but is a penis. I'm assuming that this symbolizes that Bo's father was in no way involved in Bo's life and was barely involved in his mother's life. His only connection with Bo is biological. It is literally just the penis that contributed to Bo's life. But there's also this possibility that Bo's father was in Bo's life briefly, since we see a man that may be him at that play. And when Bo takes that pill without immediately sipping water, the search result on Google for side effects says, remembering John, who may have been the father that was briefly in Bo's life at a very young age, and is therefore so difficult for Bo to recollect. After the drama at the house, Bo escapes on a small motorboat, completely exiling himself from the rest of the world, as people with severe anxiety often do. Soon enough, Bo appears to be in this epic, surreal, stadium-sized trial. The trial continues to symbolize the guilt Bo feels for his actions and the pain that he and his mother have felt their entire lives. There's also a defense lawyer whose voice is so far in the background, symbolizing Bo's dying sense of self-respect and self-esteem. And the audience calmly enjoys the show, symbolizing how we often use mental illness as a form of mass entertainment. Legal documentaries, live broadcasted trials, true crime, and many other things I'm sure you can think of. And the film concludes with Bo's boat collapsing as he drowns and the audience calmly exits the stadium. A devastating ending to a life that could never be enjoyed. So easily predicted, but never to be remembered. All right, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me your recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts and ideas around Bo is Afraid. I would love to discuss because I know there are so many interpretations. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.